So today we're going to do a little theory on autoclave function and verification. These items can be used to validate any steam sterilizing unit, whether it is a pressure cooker, autoclave, or atmospheric steam sterilizer. The items I have in front of me here are self-contained biological indicators, chem strips. You can read the labels, obviously. This is a self-registering autoclave thermometer. Now, it has a thin line of mercury in the middle there. Uh, how you use it is to shake down the mercury when it's cold and then uh, place it at a 45 degree angle inside your autoclave. And this will, the mercury will climb and then stay at whatever the peak temperature was. So that's how it self registers. These things are quite expensive, but they are excellent to use in conjunction with the benchmark validation for autoclaves, which is the self-contained biological indicator. Each biological indicator contains Geobacillus sterothermophilus, which is a species of thermophilic bacterial endospore. Each ampule contains roughly 10 to the 6 spores. Each amp has its own external chem strip indicator with the blue line there. The blue line will turn black once it's uh, been exposed to steam and has been sterilized. Each ampule contains an internal glass tube, which uh, is sort of like a glow stick. You break the inside of it uh, after you've run it through the sterilization cycle. The liquid containing the endospores will seep out and come into contact with that wafer there at the bottom of the glass tube. The wafer contains the growth medium responsible for the reactivation of the bacterial endospores, should they not be sterilized. The ampules require incubation in an incubator. That's what this is. That's the brand of my incubator. It is specifically for the small self-contained biological indicators. In the back, there's a spot where you place your little ampule and you crack it like a glow stick. This one has previously been cracked. I've been storing mine in the garage. I wanted to ensure it still works. As you can see, the color change between purple to yellow this indicates that there is surviving bacterial endospores that have been reactivated when they came into contact with the nutrients. When cycling biological indicators, one indicator would be meant to bury in central inside whatever load it is you are testing in your autoclave or steam sterilizer, and a second one as a control to ensure that your incubator is actually working. Uh, notice on the chem strips there is no color change indicating that these were not steam sterilized. So expect your control to always remain blue where the cycled ampule should be black on the exterior and hopefully remains purple as well. Otherwise, you failed your sterilization test. These incubators run at 60 degrees Celsius. It take about 24 hours to accurately get a reading on your ampules. The blue light indicates it's heating up, so I'm going to let this heat up before we run something. When selecting a load to cycle for verification, ensure that the load is representative of what you would normally expose to your steam sterilizer of choice. In this instance, it's going to be a grain jar. This is one quart filled with roughly three cups of hydrated wheat. I'm going to need two biological indicators for this. One is going to be buried central in the load. Central because all of this grain is going to act as an insulator, making the core of the load the most difficult to sterilize. Core temps need to be reached in order to ensure complete sterilization of the entire mass of the media. So essentially you're testing the penetration capability of your sterilizing unit. Once the amp is loaded, put your lid on, foil cap. When using a pressure cooker or a benchtop autoclave, make sure to have spacers to elevate your work out of the water and a trivet. Add three quarts of water, the load to be cycled, and the autoclave thermometer, which I have placed inside of a mason jar with a leak proof lid hole large enough to fit the thermometer. Now I want to keep as much liquid out of this as possible so that this is affected by the steam and not by the boiled water. Now I've added a third jar. Uh, it's empty just to rest 
this up against it to keep the thermometer at a 45 degree angle. Turn on your heat source and wait for the water inside to boil. Now you're going to want to wait for the overpressure valve to pop up and the lid lock to pop up before you start your 15 minute purge cycle timer. So both valves have just popped and you can hear the steam and trapped gas is evacuating. It's now time to start your 15 minute timer. By venting off all of the internal trapped gases and replacing it with steam, you will be allowing the internal temperature to reach a true 121 degrees Celsius when it hits 15 PSI. Timer is up. Now it's time to add your weighted jiggle weight and allow pressure to climb. I usually allow the dial to climb to 17 before cutting the heat. And I'll be running this cycle for 90 minutes. The 90 minutes is up. Turn off the heat. I'm gonna allow this to reach zero and then uh, take out the amp. All right, there it is. You see that the uh, blue chem strip has turned black. You can hear the little crack and uh, fired in the incubator. Now time for the control. You can see that the control does not have a black chem strip, obviously, because it wasn't cycled. That goes in alongside. Now it's gonna sit in here for 24 hours. I'll check it then. And the max registering thermometer registered at 123. It's been 24 hours. Let's check these amps. The control, as expected, uh, for proper function of the incubator it should have turned yellow indicating that there is presence of vegetative bacteria having been re reactivated from the endospores the cycled amp you can see with the black chem strip uh, is clear crystal clear and has no change in color uh, this means that the load has passed we have verified that the steam exposure cycle is sufficient to sterilize that load. This is how we know that our PCs or our autoclaves are sufficient to sterilize grains completely. So after validating that cooker and verifying the load, we can see why the biological indicator is the benchmark and not the chem strip or the thermometer as the thermometer will only register the peak temperature. It doesn't really tell you much else. The chem strip is the same. It just tells you that it's been exposed to steam, but the biological indicator itself shows you whether or not organisms have been destroyed at the core of any given load. So these are what's necessary to verify your steam unit, which could be a Presto, a Ninja, a Instapot, or just a regular old atmospheric steamer, which includes just a pot full of water. Liquid media can be verified using the same indicators. Uh, these have holes in the top of them, so they'll need to be hermetically sealed before you put them into any vessel containing liquid. And that's it, that wraps it up. That's how you validate a pressure cooker or a steam sterilizer unit.